Hey, 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 what's going on, everybody? What's going on, family? Listen, uh, it's a little bit after three o'clock central standard time. So y'all know what that means. We are live for another edition of Book Talk Live. That's right. Another edition of Book Talk Live. Um, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Sugar Ray Destin Jr. I am the founder, CEO of BOBM Publishing. We have launched, as you can see at the bottom of your screen, well over 400 authors to Amazon, number one best-selling author. Um, 87 of those have been become international bestsellers, and 27 have become number one international bestsellers, right? And so with that being said, as I always say, you should be next. There's no reason for you not to be part of this party that we have have uh, have been rocking with, right? So what I'm what I'm going into for you today is another coach's edition. It's just going to be me um, giving you a little bit of game, like a you know giving you some free game, free ninety nine. Um, all you got to do is apply it, use it, write down the notes, take notes, and go apply this to your life. You will be successful if you put it. Put it into action. Um, so for those of you who are tuned in with me, go ahead and drop your, your name, your comments. You know, let me know where you're from. Um, for those of you who catch the replay, um, just go ahead and put in the put in the comments replay squad. I check the check the comments and come back. Me or somebody on my team will come back and uh and say, Hey, thank you for watching, tuning in. We appreciate you. But let's let's jump into today's subject because this one, this one is really personal for me, right? Um, because I did it. I, I remember the process of going through and re-energizing the, the book that I had wrote. Um, just a little bit of a backstory on it. When I when I wrote my first book, first book is called um it's called Claim Your Destiny, right? And prior to the book, that was there was all this this hype around it. I was I was excited about it. I would drop little little things in there saying, you know, hashtag claim your destiny, hashtag claim your destiny. You can be great. You can do this. And so people knew that the book was coming. So when the book finally dropped, it was this excitement. It was this congratulations. You did it. You know, we're so proud of you. Thank you so much for for following through on your dreams. And and it was this excitement that was there that I hadn't really, really felt before. Um, you know, so we started off the after the book was book was launched. Um, the next thing, next thing I did was I went and set up book signings. I, I set up book signings at local coffee shops. I set up book signings at, at local bookstores. I was excited about this thing. I wanted the world to know that I actually had a book out there, right? But somewhere along the lines, and some of you are gonna relate to this. If you've already done your project, you'll be able to relate to this. Somewhere along the lines, it got to the point that the excitement died. Nobody was commenting on the on the book. Nobody was talking about buying the book. Um, nobody, nobody even mentioned made mention of the book. And so I just kind of put it on the shelf and I, I pushed it to the side. Never, never took a took a second look at it. Never took a second thought about the book. I was like, well, you know, I did it. I accomplished the goal of writing a book, so I'm I'm better than most. And then something inside of me, uh, it kind of broke free. I was I was watching this movie, one of my favorite movies. Y'all can judge me if you want to. I don't care. Favorite, one of my favorite movies, Dream Girls. And in this movie, there's a scene that uh, there's a scene where they had just launched this this song. Um, Bought me a Cadillac, Cadillac, Cadillac car. Bought me a Cadillac, Cadillac car. And I mean, the song was grooving. It was soulful. It was nice. It was exciting. It was energetic. And they started they started gaining traction. It got to a point that they were actually playing on the radio. And shortly after they got to the radio, radio play, they hear somebody else with the exact same song. Everything was the exact same. The only difference was they were singing it with a different med medley, a different melody and a different medley. So it sounded completely different. Um, and the guys, the guys got together and they said, wait a minute, how can you let them do this? They gathered back at the uh, they gathered back at the base of where the where they were putting the project together, where they were in the studio. And and so, you know, it's like three, three men standing around this table and they said, 
I said, man, how, how could you let them do this? This is my music. This is this is my life's blood. How can you let them take my music? And and somebody made a suggestion. We got to get on the radio. We have to get on the air. We got to get more radio play. And they said, yeah, I know that. But that takes money. And Jamie Foxx's character, I loved his character in this movie, even though he was a villain. He was a genius. His mind just thought different. Um, and and he said he took he took this box of all these Cadillac keys and he threw them on the on the table. And he said, what do you call this? That sparked something inside of me because I looked at my book a lot different. I looked at my book and said, what have I been doing? I have this amazing project that I, I it took me years to finish this project because I didn't have a publisher. I didn't have a coach. I didn't have a guide. I had to go at it alone. And once I realized I'm sitting on, I'm sitting on, on hundreds, I'm sitting on thousands, I'm sitting on millions. It's up to me at this point to rejuvenate the, the project. What did I do? I took that same book and I re-energized it. So in the, in, as, as you all tune in with me, and I'm glad you're tuned in, I got a few steps for you that I'm about to take you through the process of rejuvenating, re-energizing your book and helping you to build something that's going to generate way more book sales than you've ever done before, right? But before I do that, before I do that, I got to take a quick commercial break. Um, be right back with you in about two and two. Be right back with y'all. Man, working with uh, Suge and his his uh, his party or his team, um, you know, that it's just been a a great experience. Um, I'm a you know former athlete, so I've dealt with teams my whole entire life. And uh, when you have a team and you have a leader, um, you can't have anything but success. So Suge has been a phenomenal leader and he's led all of these other authors to the promised land or to winning um, to the championship, whatever you want to, um, uh, you know, coin the phrase, he's helped all of us. He's led us to that number one status. And uh, I know this book will probably be number one as well. And that's, you know, that's what a leader does. He leads everyone else to the promised land, to that ship. So um, Suge and his his uh, team has led all of us to number one. And, uh, you know, I look forward to continuing our relationship with, you know, these books and I'm bringing other people in because I know that's my guy. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. My guy, Reggie Rusk, if you do not know that man, I advise you to go look him up. Reggie Rusk, former NFL football player, but even bigger than that, he has a big heart for those that he helps. Um, has a has a, a football league, uh, Mamba Mamba Seven Seven on Seven, where he teaches and he coaches young men uh, from the ages I think it's like five and up to become football players. He teaches them the fundamentals, teaches them the base and has helped well helped. I don't know how many athletes I'm not even going to go there, but I will give you the number based on scholarships over 400 million in scholarships that he's been able to help those athletes um, obtain. So well, well versed, great, great guy. Right. Also my brother, uh, just based on our B days, we got the same birthday. So, yeah, it was it was instant connection uh, when we started working together. Now, let's jump back into this. Right. Um, we're talking about re-energizing the sales on your project. And I know I'm talking to a lot of you who are authors already. And because I, I know that I know what happens. Right. That first that first month. You are excited. You're energized. Man, my book just came out. I'm going to sell it to everybody. I'm going to tell everybody I got a book. I'm going to tell my mom. I'm going to tell my cousins. I'm going to tell my, my job. I'm going to tell my friends. I'm going to tell my tell the people that know me, the people that don't know me, anybody that comes in contact with me, I'm going to tell them about this book. Well, somewhere in that second week, third week, fourth week, that month mark, you 
lose that momentum. Why is that? You lose your momentum for a few reasons, but we're going to talk about how to rejuvenate it, right? Um, actually, let me tell you why you lose that, that momentum. First reason that you that you you're losing that that momentum is because you sold to everybody that you know or you've talked to everybody that you know of the people that you talked to or that you sold books to or that didn't buy from you. There were so many people in that number. You may have sold 10 books, but you got 50 notes. And so those notes begin to discourage you. So you got a little bit discouraged thinking that your work wasn't worth it. You thought that your work was not worth it. Right. That's the first thing. Second reason that you that you got to de-energize is because you thought it was just going to be instant success. One one minute you publish this book and the next thing you know, everybody's just going to love the fact that you got a book. They're just going to love it. And next thing you know, you're going to be on Oprah's book of the month list and you're going to be on all these TV interviews and all these TV shows. And you're going to be on all these podcasts and you're going to because you saw somebody else do it. The third reason that you that you stop selling is because you don't want to oversaturate other people's timelines with your information, right? Let's go with the first reason and let me dispel that myth for you. You didn't sell to everybody you know because you sold to the people in your immediate circle. You sold to the people that you talk to every day. You talk to the you talk to the people that you're around on a consistent basis. You forgot all about your elementary school teacher. You forgot about all of all of your um, your elementary, middle school, high school, college classmates. You forgot about that the person that you met at the club the the night that you went out when you weren't supposed to, but you got that number anyway. You forgot about the the DJ that was at the club. You forgot about the person that invited you to a network network marketing mixer. You forgot about the people at your church. You forgot about the people that go to the gym with you. You forgot. You get where I'm going with this. There are so many people that are in your circle that you didn't touch, but you thought you talked to everybody because that select list of people that you have that you talk to on a consistent basis, that circle is so small that you forgot about the other 7 billion people in the world that you don't know yet. Get back out there. That's the first thing. Second thing, and I don't even remember what I said is the second thing, but I'm going to go with the fear of saturating the market. Well, there are there are thousands and thousands of posts that hit people's timelines every single day. If you look at the major brands, if you look at the major companies, they still promote for Apple when an Apple product comes out. You still see commercials for for uh, Cerveza, for for Dos Equis. You still see commercials for um, for Coca-Cola. You still see commercials for McDonald's. And they're making millions and billions of dollars every year. But you don't want to talk about your, you don't want to talk about this book that you put all your hard work into. You better get back out there and saturate the market. I don't care if they if they are are saying that you're doing it too much. Those are called haters. The ones that are saying that you put you putting this little book stuff on my timeline all the time. Why you keep doing that? Don't worry about them. Because guess what? In a few years, they won't matter anyway. There are other people who are waiting on you to post about your content. Right. And then the last thing is that false belief that you had that it was going to be instant success. And instantly you're going to be on all these podcasts. You're going to be on all these shows. You're going to be on all these different different platforms. That's fine. That's what you thought was going to happen. You have to build yourself up to get to that level. And then, yes, when you drop a book. It will allow you to be on different platforms, but you got to put in the work. You have got to put in the work and stop saying what everybody else is doing around you. Stop comparing yourself to others. Once you put in the work, they'll figure out that you are worthy of their attention, but they have not figured you out yet. So keep working until you become known. Right. Um, so let's jump into it. The ways that you can re-energize your books. Because we already dispelled the myths. We already know that it's going to take a little bit more work than you've been putting in. We already know that it's going to take more people than you've already talked to. We already know that you have something great that was written, that was put out there. Now, how do you re-energize that book after month one, after month two, after month three? There's five quick things that I'm going to touch on. The last one is so obvious. I'm not even going to give you the answer until the last minute, right? 
but first thing, I want you to go back and reread that book. Reread the book. I'll touch on that in a minute. Second thing is update the content inside and outside of the book. This is important, and there's a reason that you want to do that. Third thing is you want to look for opportunities to be present, to be visible to others. Um, some of those opportunities are going to be speaking, book signings, media tour, become an event vendor. These are just a few ideas to help you out. Um, next is after that book is relaunched, talk about it, post about it. The same way that you were energized that when it first came out, I need you to get re-energized about it all over again. Like it's a brand new baby and you want to tell the world about how good and how, how present and how amazing this thing is. Because guess what? You wrote it. They need to know that you did something amazing. Don't give up on yourself just yet. Next thing is the last thing is is so easy to do that, like I said, I'm not even going to tell you about it until the last minute, because once you hear it, you're going to say, oh, why did I not think of that? Right. I love the element of surprise and I love that. I love the last one so much. I can't even wait to get to it. But let's talk about it. Rereading your book. Why do you want to reread your book? Because it's going to take you back into the moment when you first wrote it. It's going to take you back into those emotions that you had and the, the thoughts and the ideas of, of grandeur that you had when you were writing that book. You're going, as you reread that book, you might go back in there and find a few mistakes that you can easily correct. You may find some things that you that that are quotables that you didn't even remember writing. But when you hear it, when you read it again, you say, oh, this was good. Oh, that was good. And it begins to give you a certain level of of energy about the project, because now you start to see yourself for how amazing you truly are. Instead of instead of sinking back into that shell that you that you were sinking back into, you don't have to shrink. I want you to expand and I want you to elevate because that's what you deserve. So by going back and rereading that project, you're going to find things that you didn't see the first time. You're going to find opportunities in that. And those those big ideas that you had at one point will all of a sudden start flowing back into into your mind because you'll be able to see what it was that you actually had out there before. And you'll start to see yourself for who you really are, not just not just what you what you started shrinking into right so after you reread it you're going to make some of those adjustments that's where the next part going into updating the content when you update the content one of the first things that i need you to do is think about the following is there anything in the book that can is there anything in the book that can be deleted from it because it's outdated a lot of times the information that we give at one point works but it doesn't work as you can as life goes on because some of the things become obsolete but at the same time there are also things that you can add to your project there's going to be more information that you've learned that you've grown from because if your book if you wrote a a, a book about professional development or about a specific topic then guess what there are things that have changed in that industry there are things that you learned that you didn't know before right for example the book that i that i wrote called the business of books um i love that book because it shares so much gain with each of you who are new or experienced authors but when i wrote it to now there's so much more information, so much more that I've grown from because I've been in this industry longer. I've learned more about book launches. I've learned more about marketing. I've learned more about development. I've learned more about selling the book. I've learned more about creating additional opportunities. I've learned more. And so as a result, there is a relaunch for that specific book that is coming. And when it comes, I'm going to be just as excited about it as I was when it first came out. I'm going to be even more excited because it is the same. It's the same baby, but it it has grown up. Right. When your books grow, when you grow as an author, your books are going to get better. Your content is going to get better. And you, as a result, are going to find new ways to to say things that were in the book the first time 
but you're also going to be able to give additional information and additional content that will help somebody else. Because remember, it's all about helping somebody else who is behind you as they move forward on their personal journey. It's not just about you. It's about making sure that you're putting out quality content for the people who are coming behind you. That's what this that's what this this publishing industry is all about. I don't I don't care that you wrote it the first time and you did an amazing job. Get back out there. The world still needs to hear what you wrote and the reason that you wrote it the first time that was so compelling for you that you forgot the initial reason. So go back and, and re and update that content. Not only do you need to update the interior, you may want to reformat it, reformat the book and, and add uh, add drop letters at the beginning. You may want to. You may want to make sure that every page, every chapter starts on one side of the page, either on the right side or on the left side of the page. You may want to go back in and and add some key points that you didn't think about before. You may want to add a workbook to that book because the first time you wrote it, you were just writing it um, to get the project out there. The second time that you went back in, you saw opportunities that you didn't see the first time so now you have a workbook that goes along with this book which leads to a coaching program speaking opportunities training development personal don't mind me i'm just having fun right um but outside of just updating the interior look why don't you update the cover maybe there's something new that you see that you didn't see the first time because a lot of times and this happens every time i work with an author um, not, let me not say every time because I don't want to deal in absolute. Most times when I deal with with new authors and they say, well, I don't really know what I want on the cover. I hear that often. I hear that way more than than somebody coming in with specific direction for their cover. So after they see what's possible for the cover, all of a sudden their, their mind starts to flow. It starts to go into, hey, can you make this red? Can you make that blue? Can you add a can you add a baby in the park? Can you add a beach in the background? Can you add this? Can you add that? Can you add a gold star? Can you add, add wedding rings? Can you add, um, I want fire to shoot up. Every time somebody looks at it, they just see fire on the cover. Whatever the idea is, um, you may now have a different vision for that cover. And so, that's another thing that helps to rejuvenate it. But guess what? When you re, when you update that content, you now have a new project. You now have a new project. My first book, and I tell the story again and again and again and again. I updated that cover two times. The first time I updated the cover from the initial. The now let me let me make it clear. I love my first book cover because it was it was done in love. Right. The person who designed the book cover for me, I was working overnight at this point. And I told this young lady, I said, I need a book cover by by Thursday. I don't know where to get one. She said, I'm a graphic designer. And so she went and she did what she did and she captured the vision for me. Um, it was it had the it had a man with his arms raised. It had had birds in the background because that's what I said I wanted. She captured that vision. And so she actually got it back to me two days later. I told her on Sunday I had it back by Tuesday. I was able to publish my book on that Thursday, which was the which was the date, July 13th, 2015. Now. Fast forward, the time has went by. It, was, it had been about a year. I was just sitting there. Book was sitting on the shelf. I went ahead and I updated the cover myself. At this point, I was not that good with graphics. I, I think I went into Microsoft Publisher and I, I made some updates to to the cover. And I had this BMW in the in the in the front of a, a white mansion. And I had these words in gold, um, the gold bubble font. And then I had like bullet points on the front cover. Look like a network marketing flyer, y'all. Um, worst idea that I could have ever done. But guess what? I still sold because I made the updates. I was excited about it. Now, the third time I went and I actually got a professional designer to design the cover of my book. So they went ahead and updated the book and they put those bullet points on the back cover. They put the description on the back cover. They gave me the man with the with his with his arms outstretched 
and the sun in the background and the green field it was beautiful and it had my had my my uh my company colors blue and gold in there so they captured the vision perfectly but if i had not seen the first cover i wouldn't know what the second or the third cover needed to look like so over time you need to go in and if you need to update that cover that's something that will always also generate it because now you have a new project you have a brand new a brand new baby think about think about it this way some people go back and refurbish cars some people go back and refurbish computers some people go back and refurbish phones maybe it's time for you to refurbish your book the look of the book on the outside and on the inside right listen i got a lot more for y'all i'm just getting just getting started but we are talking about how to re-energize your project so got to take another quick commercial break i got to get me a sip of this water because i'm a little a little parched you know and um i'll be back with y'all in about two and two BOBM Publishing has been amazing. Uh, me personally, uh, going through the process in different parts, being a contributor to a book, also taking the lead on a book, BOBM has really broken it down for ways that someone like me can understand. I am not, I don't consider myself a professional writer. I don't consider myself an author in that realm, but what they really did, one, they gave me the confidence to, to, to let me know that I am able to do this, but then also walk me through the entire process. They were there with me step by step along the way, you know, just preparing me, answering questions, laying down the foundation and the path that we really needed to be successful in putting publishing a book. And so it to me, it's really personal. And, and to have that personal connection to um, a company that could really guide you in ways that you didn't know were possible. Again, I didn't know I was able to do this, you know, and so I really thank B.O.B. and publishing from the bottom of my heart. And, you know, as we continue to do projects together, because now I'm not done. Listen, 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 another one of my guys, man, Kenneth Wilson, man, love you to love you to life, bro. Um, this guy right here, if you don't know who Kenneth Wilson is, let me say it like this that's that dude that's that dude um he has he is a multiple time uh amazon number one best selling author i think it's like six seven eight i don't know he got a lot of them right we've been working together for a minute um getting these projects out but september 26th september 26th i need all black men black women to jot this date down because he actually has has gotten a national holiday so september 26th is national black men day um he did it he did it big this last time in uh in the dmv area but we want to make sure that this is a nationwide thing where all black men are celebrated for their for their works for their commitment um and he went ahead and and spearheaded the the holiday so let's get that man his flowers while he's here man if you don't know him uh look him up he does a lot of training and development does a lot of presentations works with a lot of companies a lot of schools um in the dmv area and listen he's just that guy he got another project coming so y'all keep your eyes open um it's gonna be good but listen let's get back to let's get back to uh this re-energizing your book. So I'm gonna I'm just drop it, drop it now. Points one um, and two. Point one, let's go back and reread it. There may be something that you missed the first time, and it may spark something inside of you by just going back and rereading the work that you had. Number two was update that content because a lot of times the content may be outdated or you have grown, so you need to add more information, add more content to it. Um, instead of instead of starting on a new project make that project the first project excellent in the in the sense that you wanted it to be when you first uh put it out there next thing is number three we're on point three and this is i need you to look for opportunities to be present or to be visible right and when i'm talking about different opportunities we're talking about we're talking about speaking we're talking about book signings we're talking about media we're talking about uh being event vendors 
and I know as as artists, a lot of us are very introverted, introverted, which means that we don't really like being around a whole bunch of people. We don't really want to do the whole crowd thing. So just the fact that I mentioned um, speaking engagements, you probably did this number. You you clutched your pearls and you said, oh, my God, I can't believe that you want me to get out there and speak. But guess what? You can you can bring more visibility to your book by being in front of larger audiences. I don't care if you start out by speaking to five people, speaking to 10 people. Um, but the larger your audience is, the more you're going to sell, the more books you will sell. Right. There's a reason that some people are selling two and three books a week and some people are selling two and three hundred books a week, because if you are in front of audiences, then you're going to have an opportunity to talk and people are going to get a chance to see how amazing you truly are, because I, I, I just need to bust your bubble real quick. I don't care what they told you. I don't care who told you that you weren't good enough. I don't care who told you that you weren't weren't smart enough, that you didn't you didn't speak well, that you didn't have anything interesting to share. You're amazing. You've you've went through something in this life that a lot of people would have given up if they had if they had to do it. But you were given your story for a reason. So it's time to get in front of those audiences that need to hear your story. There are still people that are going through the situation that you went through and that you overcame. So that's why you need to be at those speaking engagements. When you speak and you speak to large audiences or small audiences, it, it your comfort level is your comfort level. Whichever size audience you speak to, you need to talk about your book. You need to tell them about your book. You need to tell them, hey, when this, when I finish presenting, meet me at the back of the back of the room. I got a table set up and have a table set up with your banner, with your books, with with other opportunities for them to connect with you. That's how you get that book out there. People don't know what they don't know, and they don't know that you have a book. So when you start getting in front of those audiences to speak, now it brings more visibility to your book. And that gives you a chance to sell more of that of that project that you had sitting on the shelf. You're amazing. People just need to know that you're amazing. Right. And I'm not just talking to y'all. I'm talking to me, too. Right. Next is book signings. Set up set up different book signings. There's an opportunity. Bookstores love artists they love artists why because they work around books who writes books authors bookstores love to bring people in to do book signings you just have to make those phone calls ask them hey do you mind if i do a book signing at your location they'll probably say what's the name of your book look you up and say oh my god your book is fire your book is amazing i heard about you if you hear that let me know right um because what that gives you a chance to do is connect with people who actually read books. When you set up those book signings, those people have been have been going to the bookstore. Some people go to the bookstore every weekend to get to look for new projects, look for new things to read. Some people are bored with the projects that they have. You'll see it on Facebook every once in a while. You see it on, on social media. Hey, looking for a new project or a new book to read. What should I read? Drop your, your book in the comments. People are looking for you, but make sure you, you set up those signings at different bookstores, set up those signings at different events. One of the myths about book signings is that it has to be this huge, extravagant event. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. You can go to a bookstore. You can set it up. You can invite your friends and family to come to that bookstore because guess what? The more foot traffic you bring in, that's also traffic for the bookstore. Don't just have them sitting around your table. Allow those people to go and purchase other authors' books. We're all in this together. So authors support authors, right? And that's how you grow. Connect with other authors. When you're, when you're doing your book signing, I've met some of the most amazing people. And I do mean amazing people just by doing a book signing. I've met authors who have had their books um in in different bookstores and i've met authors who said you know what i just dropped my book a few weeks ago how are you 
how are you bringing visibility? It gives you a chance to network and to mingle and to talk to people who are in the same industry as you. When you go to work, you sit around the water cooler and, and talk and gossip with your friends and family, right? Make it a point to start communicating and sharing tips with other authors. Hey, this worked for me. This didn't work for me. But you get that by going to those bookstores and setting up those book signings. Next thing, and this is another one that my introverts are going to be kind of kind of nervous about media media podcasts are everywhere everybody has a podcast these days right everybody should have a podcast these days they're talking about anything and everything some people are talking about relationships some people are talking about um about business some people are talking about about uh mental health some people are talking about uh being active in the community some people are talking about giving back to to kids some people are talking about being being in the education industry, you get it. There are so many podcasts about different things. Not only are there podcasts, but there's there are still traditional media, radio stations. Radio stations are dying out. Guess what? They would love to have you as a guest if you've actually written something worth reading. Contact your local radio stations. Contact your local TV stations and ask, hey, um, I just wrote this book and don't don't call the, the station that never does anything in the community. Call the station that connects with your audience, right? If you wrote a book for, for young African-American women who are going through domestic violence, call the local hip-hop station. Call the local R&B station. They are looking for guests because that helps that, that on-air personality. That helps them fill up anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes of their time by bringing in a dope segment like you. You are so amazing that they need to hear about you. But if you don't call and ask, you'll never know. And they'll never know that you even exist, right? Get out of that shell and, and make those connections. So set up some type of media opportunities. Every time you set up those media opportunities, especially if you've worked with me, you are already a bestseller especially if you've worked with me and my company you have already become a bestseller there's a difference between i published i wrote a book i published a book i'm an author and i'm a best-selling author and i am a number one best-selling author the fact that you have become a number one best-selling author or even a best-selling author that lets me know that you put in the work and you did something amazing let the world know now let the world know they need to know that you exist set up that media tour see if you can get on if you can get on the air you never know your interview might go viral even if it doesn't go viral those people who are tuning in and listening to you guess what some of those people are going to want to know how to purchase your book i don't care if it's two i don't care if it's five i don't care if it's ten i don't care if it's 25. the larger your the larger the show that you get on the more people are going to purchase. So you have got to continue to grow with that. Even if it starts with you're on a on a podcast and that that host has three people tuned in. Guess what? That's three more than you had. That's three more than you knew. Get out there and put yourself in front of different audiences, right? Become an event vendor. Don't be against do not be against being a vendor at an event. I don't care if it's local. I don't care if it's national. Seek opportunities to get in front of people. If that event has, has 500 people, great. That's an opportunity for you to get in front of 500 people. And here's the thing. Sometimes you may be at the back of the room. That's where you start. But the more you share and the more you show up, the more people are going to start to hear about you. So when you are at an event, let's say you are at, at an event as a vendor, here's what I need you to start doing. Ask people in that walk by your table, hey, you got a second? What's your name? I like your jacket. I like your coat. I like your hair. Find something to compliment them on. Once you find something to compliment them on, ask them. At do you mind if I tell you a little bit about my book? You'd be surprised how easy that conversation gets when you 
build the relationship because those people who are at this event, they want to support the vendors. They should be supporting supporting the vendors. You're a vendor. Even if you are just at the back of the room, you got to build that momentum. Get people's cars. Get their information. Oh, girl, I love your purse. Where'd you get that purse at? For real? Hey, you got a phone number? You got an email address? I want to add you to my list and I want to make sure that I'm connected to you. But you said you got your purse at uh at Bellagio, you got your purse at, at Macy's. Girl, you went to you you thrift shop and you went and you got it at a thrift store. Oh, I gotta I gotta connect with you. Build genuine relationships, be genuine, find something that you can connect with those people in the in the audience. Don't be standoffish because people who are standoffish, closed mouths don't get fed, right? Closed mouths do not get fed. So find a reason to have a conversation with the people that are in your that are in that uh, in that event once you find a reason to to um speak to them tell them a little bit more about you here's the thing we get so shy and we don't want to talk about ourselves sometimes you have to talk about yourselves i know this i know there's there's a word that's been been thrown around uh for people who who talk about themselves and who only think about themselves but that's not you it's called business you have to market yourself just like you would market any other project you are you have now you and your book have now become a package deal because you now have a product that you're selling to others get out there and speak speak up so again look for those opportunities to be present through speaking through book signings through media and through becoming an event vendor those are just a few of them there's so many more opportunities to become present but i need you to start getting yourself back out there next thing after you relaunch that book and we've done this for several authors i remember uh one young lady miss erica lachon um when she when she first came to us the person that she had worked with before us um god bless that person but the the cover did not represent the unique excellence that she brought to the table so what we did was we went and we just all we did was change the cover she now had a new project she began talking about the book she began you could see you could see the enthusiasm and the excitement just come back into into her heart and into her mind because she was now talking about it all over again she was talking about how amazing her book was she was talking about what was inside of her book she began to share her story i believe she even went back to school because she started seeing something inside of herself that she hadn't seen before right shout out to you miss erica we miss you um but her project began to sell we took her to number one we took the same book we didn't change anything but the exterior all we did was change the cover and made her a bestseller and it gave her a new spark of momentum and she began to generate a buzz around herself in her home community you can do the same thing once 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 she was out there she began she began she began to talk um, because she was excited. You got to get excited about your book. You got to get excited about the thing that you work so hard on because you wrote it for a reason. Don't let it sit on the shelf and don't let your dreams die because the people that you're around you aren't supporting you or aren't pushing you to the level that they, they want to or that you need them to, right? Listen, so far we've hit four major points for easy to implement points i need you to get out there and implement them right but before we're, we're not done yet i'm just gonna take one more quick break i'll be right back with y'all in about two and two once again just a little bit parched i gotta put some water in my throat make sure that i'm make sure that i'm good and listen i want y'all to hear hear it personally from miss erica erica lashawn right um be right back with y'all in about two and two just really quickly, Sugar Ray, I actually have something that I just want to say to you. Um, try not to get all emotional, but I thank you. Is people come in your life at various times, whether it be a season, a lifetime, and 
I never expected to get to this point where I'm at right now. And these accountability calls have really just held me accountable. So I guess it's a good name to have accountability calls is your spirit is just really power and it made me want to go further. I never thought about trying to have a business or seeing myself like actually going through these phases and your words of encouragement have actually really just inspired me so I thank you very much. Right, right, right. Listen, that young lady, that young lady is so amazing and I'm so proud of her. Like I said, when we when we first met Miss Erica LaShawn, um, Erica Newman, um, she was she was she was coming up coming out of a special place. And that energy that you see, um, she took her she took herself to a completely different level. And I'm I'm so proud of all the work that she put in to get her project out there, but just trusting us to help with that relaunch um, to take her to to the next level, right? So we've went through we went through four different things, four different ways to rejuvenate, re-energize the sales on your on your on your book. One, like I said, first thing, go back and reread it. Second, update the content, interior and exterior. Third, look for opportunities to be present. We talked about speaking, book signings, media tour, and being being event vendors at different events. And then the last one that we just talked about was talking about or posting about it after the, the, the relaunch. And here's the last thing that I want to touch on. And this one is, it's like the ABCs, it's, it's, it's basic. It's basic, but a lot of us as authors, as entrepreneurs, forget this because it's so simple. Set new goals. Set new goals for the project, right? You know what it took the first time to sell 100 books, to sell 500 books, to sell 1,000 books. But then you stopped because you got discouraged at some point. Like I said, we talked about that. But what I need you to do is set new goals. You forgot about the goals that you initially had. Set some more smart goals. How many books do you want to sell in the next few months? How many? How much additional income do you need? Right now, everybody's saying we're in a recession, we're in a recession. How many books would get you out of that personal recession? Get you out of that personal financial issues, out of the personal financial issues that you're having. How many, how many, uh, how many books do you need to sell to go and purchase a new car? Set a goal. Set some goals around your project, right? When do you want to have these, these sales? Do you want to create speaking opportunities from it? Do you want to create a coaching program from it? What do you want to do with your, with your book? If you haven't set goals around your book, like initially you set a goal. I want to have my book done by, by February 13th and I'm going to have it published by February 27th. And then I'm going to have, um, I'm going to have my book signed and I'm going to have my launch and then I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to, and then you stopped, you completely stopped, stopped dreaming. You completely stopped setting goals. You stopped pushing yourself forward. Guess what? You don't when you stop setting goals, that's when you become stagnant. That's when you become that's when you stay still. Right. You're always looking for momentum. And the easiest way to rebuild momentum is to set new goals, set new goals about what it what it means to you. And I want you to re as you're resetting those goals. I want you to revisit the initial reason that you wrote that book. What was it that you were going through that you got out of? What was it, who was it that you wanted to serve? Because guess what? That audience didn't go anywhere. They're still there. They're still going through the same situations that they were going through when you wrote the book in the beginning. But now they need to know more so that you exist. They need to know more so that you have the solution. They need to know more now than ever that that what you offer them is going to help them out of their situation. But not only do they need to know, but you need to know that, hey, I wrote this book and now 
now in the next week i want to go and sell 100 books how am i going to do it i don't know but let me write out a goal let me write out a game plan let me think this through because when you stop thinking about the goals that you have you stop thinking about the things that you want to do then that's exactly what the book is going to do it's going to sit there because it doesn't have an assignment your book has an assignment when you give it a goal but until you give it a goal it's just going to sit there stagnant it's not going to tell you what to do you have to tell it what to do i want you to become a new york times bestseller okay how do i create a how do i turn you into a new york times bestseller well we got to create a, a a bigger audience okay how do i create a bigger audience i need to be in front of more people i need to create need to connect with more i need to con collect more emails i need to create a bigger email list i need to create a larger um a larger social media presence i need to this is how you begin to to rebuild that momentum you got to reset goals give your book an assignment your book has to have an assignment in order for it to be effective but if you put it on the shelf because you got discouraged then guess what your book is not fulfilling its assignment as long as you aren't putting in the work to help it reach its assignment you have to think of your book as another as another income stream what happens when you don't give your income streams uh goals then they begin to decrease because you don't you don't have a reason for them to be in your life so that book give it a give it some new goals give it a new set of a new set of 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 missions right i want to with this book that was written i now want to be on talk shows i want to be um i want to be on ellen i want to be on good morning america i want to be on um i want to be on the breakfast club i want to be on on uh Angie Martinez on Hot 97. I want to be with Dr. Dre in LA. You got to figure out what it is that you want for it. I want to be on the top podcast for authors. I want to be on, by the way, make sure you tune in to Best Southern University because that will be the top podcast for authors coming soon, right? I, I want to create um, more, I want to help free more women from domestic violence i want to help people that are dealing with mental health issues i want to bring more people to the body of christ your book has to have a mission i want to create more new entrepreneurs i want to help a thousand people become entrepreneurs in the next next year how do i do that my book is part of that part of that game plan it's part of the mission if your book has a mission and i i say this with all intensity if it has a mission if it has a goal then it becomes active it becomes it begins to generate a new buzz but you have to put in the work right so set new goals and once you set those goals commit to them commit don't just set a goal and then push it aside and then expect that it's just going to be manifested i'm going to sell a thousand books in the next in the next month because i wrote it down and it's going to be because it's written fam in what world does that happen if you're not present if you're not active if you're not if you're not visible nobody knows you exist you have to put yourself in the position to be seen to get noticed and that's what the last one is just set those goals for your book set new goals how many do you want to sell how much income do you need to make from it and then get busy making it happen right so listen that was all i got for y'all i could go on and on because there's so much more to it but if you take the information that was given today because this was a coach's edition this was just for y'all um take that information go apply it and i know i'm talking to i know i'm talking to at least one of you so the person that i'm talking to right now take that information and go apply it go get your book off the shelf go dust it off blow the blow the dust off of it get you a get you a, a rag and and wipe it down and start reading start reviewing 
Start looking through it. Make those necessary updates. Get in front of the right people. Start looking for speaking opportunities. Start looking for media opportunities. Start setting up book signings. Start not just setting up the book signings, not just looking at those speaking opportunities. Also, look for different podcasts. Look for different different vendor opportunities. Once you do all that and you relaunch that book, start talking about it. Talk about it like when you first put that book out. And last but not least, set some new goals for that book. That book has the opportunity to free you financially. But you have got to put in the work. And the last thing that I need you to understand, for me, it's not about the money. It's about the lives that you impact. The reason that I wrote my first book was because I saw that more people needed motivation than ever. It turned into a youth program. That youth program impacted the kids that looked and sounded and reminded me of myself when I was growing up. That's the reason that that book was made such a such a difference, because it meant something to me. What does your book mean to you? Because if it means something to you, you'll get back out there and you will make it work. Listen, I love y'all from the bottom of my heart. I love y'all to life. Until next time, see y'all.